Greetings and salutations. My name is Joshua Free. Greetings. My name is Joshua Free. Greetings. My name is Joshua Free. And this is episode 10 of Medical TV Season 4. Greetings. My name is Joshua Free. Greetings and salutations. My name is Joshua Free. Greetings. My name is Joshua Free, and we are resuming Mordecai TV Season 4. Uh, in this season, we have been talking about books, books, and lots of books. I don't plan to slow down any there. Hi there! My name is Joshua Free. Greetings. My name is Joshua Free. Greetings to uh, viewers, people of Earth and beyond. We can't really be sure who and how far uh, YouTube's been reaching these days. So as many of you know, uh, my name is Joshua Free. Uh, my name is Joshua Free. I'm the founder, director of uh, modern Nautica movement, uh, Nautica Babylon, developer of uh, Necronomicon, the Unlocked Bible. plan for integrating grade three for the public a master plan actually let me put on my slightly larger glasses <laughs> oh yeah no scheme would be even better actually I might even need to wear these hello kiddies your old pal the crypt keeper no. Hello, I'm Shelly Duvall, and welcome to Fairy Tales. These kids aren't going to know what I'm doing. It's fair to say I'm stepping out on a limb, but I am on the edge, and that's where it happens. Greetings, and welcome to Borsippa Headquarters in our episode of Ascending Order. In uh, case you've been asleep the past couple minutes or dialogue was too complicated, my name is Joshua Free. Last year we saw some amazing shifts in the Mardukite movement. Uh, we, we discovered that we actually had two different emphasis, and so on the one hand we had Mardukite Zoism, which uh, still carries on the integrity of the, the Mesopotamian tradition, the work of the Mardukai Chamberlains, uh, in, in kind of a neo-pagan, quasi-religious sense. And beyond that, we found that we were reaching for higher and higher goals. And so I, I finally decided to really put some put some time into the, the Systemology Society and, and establish Systemology a little bit more. A lot of the information, a lot of the overviews, uh, particularly of what, what the books cover, uh, what, what I've established as grades now, it can actually be found, it's, it's called Arcanum, and this is the, the 2021 annual review. Now, don't let that fool you, uh, our, our publishing cycle ends in August of each year, and so at the end of, uh, pretty much the end of last year, we came out with the 2021 review. It's perfectly valid uh, at this juncture. Um, if you if you get a hard copy of it, there are PDFs available uh, for download on our website, martyrkite.com. If you do, however, decide to get the hard copy, there is something a little bit different in it than you will find in the PDFs. And there's two posters, one of which, uh, this, this is a poster featuring what is 
actually the, the most advanced in, in terms of our grades, in terms of the work that's been released, uh, the Imaginomicon, which is a, a, a book that, I know you're going to laugh because, you know, Necronomicon, Cybernet, all the stuff that I put out. No, Imaginomicon, I had an idea for this years ago. It wasn't time. It wasn't, people weren't going to be ready for it, not with the kind of work that we were doing, uh, not with even maybe the, the urgency or the state of the world being what it was. But uh, this this is a, a poster you pull out, and it doesn't affect the material in 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 the booklet. Uh, these are designed to be taken out and and used. There's actually two posters uh, featured in this this issue. The other one, which may even be a little bit more critical for our purposes today, this actually shows you the 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 gradients that we have at this juncture because we're basically and and one of the reasons I, I honestly I will be taking my leave of you here shortly and turning you over to well me but um, this uh, this shows the gradients that we're up to here I'm in the process of completing the transition from grade 4 to grade 5 and so uh, I'll, I'll be uh, leaving here in a moment to do that but I wanted to, to take a minute because uh, this this is actually pretty uh, this is pretty innovative. It, it concisely all the work that I've done for a quarter of a century. It, there's there's a concise meaning behind it. Uh, it may not have been apparent at the time, but I knew what I was doing. Um, so what I ended up we established Orsipa headquarters in in 2020, and a few months after we well I wouldn't say we got settled in. I just Kind of ran with it. I did what we call the Mardukai Master Course. It covers grades one, two, and three. And in September 2020, uh, the last the last week I believe of September, actually we ran it a couple days extra, uh, much to some people's surprise. I delivered 48 lectures, which covered grades one, two, and three in their entirety. All the materials that that you would see and so forth, and it coincided with what we call the Master Editions. Now, the, the Marduk Master Course itself, this tome, I mean, and these are pretty hefty, heavy-duty books. Uh, people that get them, they love them. Uh, it's, it's probably what metaphysical, occult, uh, you know, futuristic, this is, I mean, this, this is where it's at. So, the complete Marduk Master Course, Keys to Gates of Higher Understanding. This includes the transcripts for all 48 lectures that I gave. The second part of it includes study material and outlines and uh, all kinds of bonus stuff that actually appears as an appendix in what is actually four different master editions. We have two master editions for grade one, one for grade two, one for grade three. And what I planned on doing today, I thought it would be kind of special. Originally, now if you were to show up at the, the Marquette Academy and say I want to take the master course, I'm not going to say that stuff all over again. So what I did you know, I thought ahead. What I did was uh, I, I had them recorded. Now, we didn't film them, but we did have, uh, have audio recordings. And actually, my original intention was that they would be released on CD, which I believe they were for a very brief time, uh, before the company that produced the CDs decided no longer to produce CDs. So what we do now is we basically have people listen to the lectures. Now, it doesn't mean I'm not available, but uh, as far as the, the lectures themselves, the ones that have a transcript, for them, uh, we that's that's what we do. So uh, when you come in, now we are all new of Arcanum, great magical Arcanum. I it's actually what launched the Mardukites in 2008. This is a, a master course in magic for modern wizards. I believe it's over a thousand pages long now. Okay, 960 something, not quite, uh, 960 something pages. It includes not only an updated text for Arcanum, but it also has the as an introduction, <laughs> as if it's introductory, as an introduction to the full text of Arcanum as a reference book. It includes the full text of Sorcerer's Handbook. So now you've got Sorcerer's Handbook and Arcanum. This is Route A uh, of of uh, Grade One. Uh, all in a nice, nice concise uh, book. Uh, nice hardcover there. And that's one half of grade one. Grade one is, uh, it's got two parts. The other one is Merlin's Complete Book of Druidism. And this is a master course in Druidry for Modern Druids. Now, this, this is where we start getting into 
the Master Edition anthologies as, as we kind of started doing years ago. You might remember the Druid Complete. All the materials in that have since been revamped, re reissued, revised. This includes uh, the Druid's Handbook. It includes the Book of Elven Fairy. It includes the Draconomicon. It includes the Veralt Researches, which is something kind of new. I released three booklets, or booklets, three books, three volumes of a book of Veralt uh, several years ago. I, it took a few years a piece. Uh, it was material that I, I was basically collecting when uh, I was doing my, my kind of Veralt phase of work. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you're familiar with Dr. Monroe and whatnot. So all that is in here. And then, uh, like I say, the appendices in here are also the the second portion of of the master course textbook. So you, you kind of have access to it no matter how you're studying it, how you're doing it. Uh, so that's this is a route D for grade one. Now, a lot of you are probably familiar with this one, and this is not the same as the paperback that was released like a decade ago. This is Necronomicon, the complete Anunnaki legacy. Uh, this one's got to be over a thousand pages. Uh, still some high 900s. Okay, well, these, these are really hefty books. So this has like 16 different books in it, all in one. Uh, and, I mean, and, and the books that we used to release were already, you know, in thought Gates of the Necronomicon, that had like four different books, you know, in it as, as one book. So all of the Marnakite Chamberlain's work you know, everything that pertained to Mesopotamia, Simon's Necronomicon, the Anunnaki, the whole shebang, is all in this one book. I mean, we've tried to make this easy uh, and, and concise, and then, of course, delivering the master course in addition to it. So, this is uh, Necronomicon, the Clean Anunnaki Legacy, and if you're interested in this kind of nature of work, even if you don't follow along with the master course, you're probably going to want this book. The most recent, and uh, one of the things I plan on kind of emphasizing more with these these videos, this video series, is the systemology work. It's something that hasn't been covered on our YouTube channel before. It's something that actually, even though I came out with booklets over a decade ago uh, regarding it, which have since actually been put into a book called uh, Systemology, the Original Thesis, which is contained in the Master Edition as well, uh, this was... This work was being done behind the scenes for a decade before, in, in late 2019, probably, oh, three, four months before the, all this COVID and all this other stuff hit, you know, the world changed. I, I knew I needed to do that. Uh, you will find, however, on this channel, there is a lecture series called The Power of Zoo, which not only are those lectures uh, transcribed and put into a book called *The Power of Zoo*, and which is also in this master edition. But uh, th this is this is really innovative work. Uh, it's it's really what the future of the development of metahumans, the future of the evolution of humanity, the survival of humanity, if you want to put it that way. Uh, it's really what it's all about. So here we have the systemology handbook, and this includes everything from the original thesis and of course the *Power of Zoo* transcripts, but also as I say, in late 2019, I was finally able to synthesize what I felt was the right presentation for systemology, introducing it for grade three. And that included the Tablets of Destiny and a book called Crystal Clear. And uh, that everybody that's actually looked into this work, I know it's, it's sometimes hard to, to take that initial step, but everybody that's looked into this work has, has found some really effective life-changing experiences with it and and that's really what i hope for for everybody so what i'm going to do is i'm i'm going to turn this over to me and we will uh we'll probably have like a slideshow you know keep your your visual you know acuity occupied while while listening to the lectures but uh this is this what you're about to hear i believe it's september 20th uh, uh 2020 and it was the, it's the very first lecture of the Mardukai Master Course, and we'll probably more concisely and more thoroughly introduce exactly what I've just shown you. So I hope you enjoy. Greetings and welcome to the Mardukai Academy. And it is this 
the 21st of September 2020, which is the autumn equinox. Of course, that's not why I've called you here today. As you remember, the notice said class is in session. So what is what does that mean? Well, I'm I'm very pleased to announce uh, the completion of the volumes, the master editions that that comprise this Mardukite master course. Uh, this has been a long time coming and expected, and with the completion of uh, release of the great magical arcanum, we are we're well on our way now, and. So I'm, I'm here to deliver something very special, which is the Mardukite Master Course. And the, the purpose of this really, not only for the Mardukite Academy and, and the Systemology Society, which the course serves, is to provide master instruction for masters. And uh, by that I mean instructors. And this is important. Because unfortunately, uh, as as an as a writer, someone that has a tendency sometimes to sit back up into the ivory tower and and kind of look out and deliver the course materials, get feedback uh, along the way. Uh, Twenty five years has gone into this, and uh, I've never delivered a candid uh, personal instruction of the actual material. Now some of you here have obviously been to previous courses and demonstrations, workshops, and uh, what we're doing now is to be certain of the duplication of the material and the knowledge is uh, for me to bring this to you in a very chronological and systematic presentation for the purposes of duplication and to ensure, certify, and provide professional qualifications for mastering the understanding of these materials, as it says on the sheets. That's the purpose of this course. So the purpose of this course, this is not a dictation or uh, we're recording this for posterity and to deliver an accurate master course hereafter. So I'm, I'm doing this once, doing this once, providing it to you, and hoping that we go out and present this, this masterful uh, collection of material that we call the master grades, master work, and of course now a master course. So what is this? It is a course. Uh, it's not a, it's not, I'm not going to sit up here and read to you the materials. Uh, it's important that you have access to these materials whether it's these master editions that we have here or however else that uh, you've been able to collect the material over the years uh, not much has changed concerning the material only its presentation and for the purposes of this course and uh, the development of what we're doing now the gradation of it having grades grades and routes of knowledge and this master course is intended to deliver these grades and routes of knowledge in a way that an artist masters their craft. That is what we mean by mastery. And these are master grades. Of course, in the Systemology Society, we are working now in grades four and five and so forth. And that's very important because it lets you know we're moving somewhere. There is somewhere to go. But we've also capped this off in terms of the master work and the master grades. And that completed with the 2019 release of Crystal Clear. So what we have now is a graded, structured method of relaying essentially knowledge that uh, is the result of my own research and discovery using esoteric technologies of the mind and spirit for the last 25 years. So it's high time here with my silver anniversary. We're going now 25 years from 95, 1995 to 2020 now. And so I've capped off the master 
editions and the master course and the master grades with three levels, three grades, uh, which composes four routes. And although many people will be able to access a wide amount of knowledge from the master course specifically and exclusively, this is a appendix and supplement to the literary work that is more widely available, the books and the materials. And my original intent in doing this was actually to only deliver the master course to those that had actually already worked through the first three grades uh, of material on their own. And so, which uh, those present here today, like within this room, have all done so. So that's a benefit for us here. Now, for those listening to recordings later on, the again, the purpose of this is to solidify the work through these three grades. And by the three grades, I mean basically everything that I have written and released between 1995 and 2019. It, it all relates to a singular stream of instruction. And it's now been able to be divided and classified and collected. We have these anthologies, each with represent a different route. And I'll get into the grades and routes in a minute, but it's important, even though we're going to be beginning at the beginning and some people may only be interested in accessing certain aspects and properties of of the the grand scheme of this this pathway uh, I want to take this first introductory lecture and just introduce the course and give you a bit of a reality on what we're going to be handling throughout the entire scope of this work uh, we've been able to divide it basically into three grades which pertain to a chronology of time. We're dealing with first what's most accessible. We're going to deal with the esoteric and the occult semantics and the New Age revivals and traditions that have sprung up in America and mainly been imported from Europe and primarily Western Europe at that, that history. That's grade one. And we call that the Western magical tradition. Uh, you're probably most familiar with the semantics of the Western magical tradition whenever you're dealing with uh, popular New Age traditions and revivals, uh, the, the Wiccan and witchcraft traditions being probably one of the most prominent, especially uh, with, with pop culture. Some of the presentations, uh, even vampirism, uh, falls into that. You're seeing a lot more um, subculture, dark concepts, uh, mystical concepts becoming more wide stream again. Uh, as they were once before with like fantasy literature, uh, you see revivals now. We have Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, uh, a lot of mysticism making a return into modern consciousness. And a lot of this drawn from elements that have been revived within what we call the Western magical tradition. Uh, you know, the figures of the past, people are familiar with, of course, Aleister Crowley and, and some of these others that have made bigger names for themselves. They all represent that. And that's grade one. And for that, we could consider almost everything of the present, more or less, or in the last hundred years or so of the magical revival, uh, extending back through medieval Europe and of course uh, back into the time of the ancient druids and the shamanic practices that were being conducted uh, all throughout that territory which had become now a part of mythology and folklore and that is an element that again we're dealing with grade one now grade one is unique in the fact that we've actually divided it into two routes uh, there's one route which is specifically a broad introduction to the Western magical tradition like what I've described and then 
the development of it specifically in Europe and the structure of that and its systematization uh, in Celtic Druidism or even just Druidism not even specific to what we allocate as as the Celtic lands of Britain and Ireland and so forth so that's grade one now in grade two we have what we call the ancient mystery school of Mesopotamia and that's actually an element that's pretty paramount to our to our tradition here of, of structure and learning and even what we've named ourselves Mardukite after all that goes back to Mesopotamia in grade two and uh, there's a lot of overlapping again between again uh, the routes uh, the route a uh, named after Arcanum and also a point of, of beginnings the Arcanum volume route a which is a very broad approach and then route D named for Druidism which of course elements of the two routes overlap and when you start to stretch back farther beyond even Druidism we reach what we consider the origins of the Western magical tradition as we can demonstrate it in the expansion of culture the literary traditions that have been passed down the iconic themes uh, emphases on the dragon and certain mythological themes that have been duplicated through various cultures and which are actually more uh, widely known as opposed to Mesopotamia which has actually remained kind of in the far depths and reaches of human consciousness and what we consider the origins of human civilization in terms of its systemization and the actual social uh, the civic programming and manner in which we've been operating uh, for thousands of years and we treat that in grade two now we've gone from what's accessible then to farther reaches into the past about to the extent that we can go in terms of literary records once we've done that and then in grade three what we're working with is a composite of all of it because these are not exclusive to one another however our understanding of them becomes more and more refined because what we've actually found is that since the time of ancient Mesopotamia and the origins of a lot of these systems uh, various cultures and the uh, passage of time the rel relay of communication not being perfectly duplicated it has caused a degradation uh, of you know we've we keep moving further down from what was once a perfected state or a more perfected knowledge not closer to so rather than do what many have done and this is something that is uh, very common with those that work with what we now only classify as grade one materials uh, to treat those as a whole uh, that a lot of people reach the vista of grade one uh, which is represented equally by the lunar level or the sphere of the moon or veil however you might want to classify that and and that's that's figurative only but it, it all does seem to work out that way in terms of the planetary alignment to these grades and most of you are familiar with that classification from the ladder of lights in the Mesopotamian tradition and that's what our grades are actually based on so in one two and three we are dealing with the moon we are dealing with the mercury and we are dealing with Venus and in the Mesopotamian tradition that would be Nana, Nabu, and Ishtar. And so at grade three we are dealing with material of the Ishtar gate or the third veil of the true uh, ascent up the ladder of lights or pathway to self-honesty or what we are also referring to as gateways to infinity in systemology. So, 
when you put all these together, we are trying to take it to a higher level and not simply remain fixed at this occult, ritual magic, ceremonial, or even mythological framework. And we are moving forward in grade three with a futurist or next gen methodology, which we are calling Mardukite systemology. And Mardukite systemology as grade three and being the encompassing uh, pinnacle of what we're working at for the master course is really the perspective that an instructor or a master of this material is approaching this material with. And that's why I say I'm not trying to duplicate in these lectures or recordings the actual material itself because we are approaching it from at least for the purposes of this course a grade three understanding and that's not to say that you have had to work through all of the materials already in order to understand this however we aren't treating for example the routes of magic and mysticism and druidism and even ancient Mardukite Mesopotamia as fixed encompassed holes of which there is nothing outside of because unfortunately that's what happens with most paradigms a paradigm becomes a continuous hole in which everything operates and works fine as long as you stay within it as soon as you step out of it well that's where things break apart and so we're not confining our stuff to that now this is a this is important for me to point out because this is actually what separates the average initiate esoteric practitioner and so forth from what we are treating as a master because at grade one I'll be honest with you many of the people I have encountered in my journeys rarely get beyond that as as an actualization point and so when we refer to the seven levels or seven gates or seven steps up to infinity the thing that's been discovered from a master level understanding is that this structure of veils and thresholds that we cast off as we move upward is actually mirrored at each level and so what happens is that most practitioner practitioners that break through the earth gate they they finally realize they're not just these physical bodies uh, there is something more they break into this first veil of the moon and enchantment and the glamours of the mysticism and the lights and that the rainbow is before them and there is this this whole other world there is a sense of arrival there is a sense of having a change in beingness of being in one point as opposed to a previous point and in that there is usually a sense of completion that a cycle has been completed that there's been a breakthrough that a threshold has been passed and many people will then work through the seven veils within the confines of that first grade that first level and each time feeling more and more of that accomplishment more and more of that arrival and what ends up happening with that mentality is that it usually strengthens and solidifies it as a whole because as an encompassed whole for example uh, grade one or either of the routes of grade one could be treated as a complete wholeness or continuity they function as a paradigm they are functional they have a series of principles a series of concepts axioms symbols that represent various ideals and when you put them together they seem to have a causal relationship which using only that paradigm could be defined with that paradigm not much different than what we do uh, in the physical uh, earth gate scenario uh, on the planet earth with for example the physical sciences we can usually take a look with physical instruments and we examine as an observer 
the consequences or the causal actions of various sequences. And we define those consequences based on that paradigm. And we say, well, if we do this, this happens, or if this takes place, so and so. And it works. It seems to work. It only breaks down when you step outside the paradigm. What we're working towards is really a paradigm free paradigm where we are not restricted to the semantics of one set of mythologies or cultural symbols or another or even have to spend a lot of time which we do in certain respects just to break it down for you uh, spend a lot of time in trying to make all of the comparisons that are possible well you know Zeus is also Jupiter which is also Marduk and then if you compare this mythology here of an underworld with the descent over here and so forth you could spend an entire lifetime with that and it is a lot of interesting stuff there's a lot of interesting facts and data that you could do with that and we cover that that's one of the elements of for example the great magical arcanum and the discoveries made in the Mesopotamian tradition where we find the root or archetypes of these mythological for example gods and goddesses or certain epics or stories or themes which later other cultures kind of copy and paste it in their own way but never a true duplication and so we have all these various uh, languages and names and so forth depending on where cultures were uh, where they were located for example uh, a culture that existed in more desert terrain would seem to place more emphasis on water and the waters of life and deities associated with waters and fertilities in that respect uh, in order to survive whereas in the northern countries you see more uh, of an emphasis on fire because that was what they used more prominently to for their means of material survival to keep warm and then of course you see venerations you know the old pagan venerations of these elements which were used for survival and again at that at that perspective and within those paradigms it seemed to make sense uh, you know structuring your agricultural the uh, the rise and fall of tides and, and the seasons and and structuring the observance of different times of year with uh, the planting of the crops and so forth well this was very paramount to the survival of the ancient pagan man uh, and and society so what I've done is we have a, a, a series of materials to go through in order to accomplish this and uh, it is a large understanding of background uh, to to bring what I am hoping to deliver as Mardukite systemology which is a, a basically and essentially a higher understanding of the work uh, and what we can do with this to further ourselves and get out of these trappings that have been laid down because each of these veils we are not adding that is one of the other another illusion of this work we are not adding the actual layers to us as we move through this we are taking layers away aspects that have actually been artificially implanted or taken on or enshrouded us to bring us down to this earth gate to bring us down to this perspective where uh, the human condition is basically fixed to believe that it is in and of these bodies now most of you here today and those listening most of you know that there is something more otherwise you wouldn't be uh, you wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be listening you, you really can't convince people of this this type of work it's it's something that has to be realized and actualized on an individual basis or it won't be real it won't be real for you it won't be real for them or that guy over there To share a reality on this is to basically deliver a duplication of what I'm trying to present in the Mardukite Master Course. And this is, this is a professional course. 
Uh, our intention is, of course, to uh, certify instructors to be able to deliver this information on a local basis. Uh, and, and to do that, to maintain the professionalism of the Mardukite name, the Mardukite Academy, and the Systemology Society, it's important that we deliver this and have it down and have it recorded so that it can be delivered in a concise and systematic way. Now, this course is essentially chronological of my own personal journey, uh, though that just so happens to be the way it worked out. That's uh, not necessarily what it was meant to be, but uh, my introduction into the mid-90s was with traditional ritual magic and ceremonial magic, uh, my initiation into Druidism, and that was kind of my own grade one crash course. My intentions in understanding the roots of what I was learning and the roots of what other people seem to be really latched on to uh, in the mid 90s and the late 90s when uh, occultism and pagan revivals and witchcraft and druidism and a lot of this was was making a, a, a serious resurgence as it had done several generations prior with the foundations of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and Argentum Astrum and Aurum Solis and all kinds of Rosicrucian and Theosophical groups. So we're coming up again on this point where uh, where, are we le where is this leading to? Uh, we haven't seen a great improvement on the planet uh, in terms of uh, society, civilization, where the material technologies have brought us. So we need masters. We need people who are able to grasp this material and deliver it because it is a higher understanding. And it does follow uh, a premise that I originally set down back in the 90s. It's taken a long time to arrive here. But I'm I'm pleased to announce that it actually has, and I'm 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 excited to deliver what will be essentially the most complete esoteric course when you factor in the literary materials and what we'll be going through. The most concise course delivered of, on these subjects, and for the sole purpose of flattening these waves that we have collapsed through the last thousands of years that have separated us from a higher, truer point of being and knowing. And that is the intention. As a upper level Mardukite Academy systemology course, which all of you, I mean, I'm taking I'm taking a step back from working on the higher grades to deliver what is going to be a concise step and a, an advancement into what we are now dealing with with systemology. And Mardukite systemology requires a greater control and actualization and mastery of self than really has ever been demonstrated before through these other paradigms, although they have all led to or believed to have been leading to these higher points of actualization. In truth, the, ma the magicians and wizards and sages and priestesses and so forth of the last several thousand years were all following in the shadows of this higher, truer point of being and knowing and the understanding of that, but they were doing it within their own cultural ways and within the confines of the language and understanding of those societies. And we really have nothing to gain by performing a perfect duplication or reconstruction of those traditions, which we've already found the limits of. And now we can grade on, on this chart and on the pathway to self-honesty and beyond.
So I am really looking forward to seeing what this can lead to once more instructors, masters, individuals, and even those who have no real intention of getting involved in the organization and structure of, of our work uh, can create a better world since we are all participants in that here and we can really only create to the extent that we can imagine.